G'day everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the whole process that I used to grow mushrooms. I'm pretty pleased with the way it turned out actually, but uh, you'll have to wait till the end of the video to see how this went. But anyway. First point I'd like to raise is this is not my best production video ever done. Not that I'm great at this, but I videoed all of this as things happen, as things arrive, and as I built stuff. So there is absolutely no continuity. Um, I made a mistake with the orientation of the camera a couple of times, but not my best effort. So please bear with me. So the reason I'm making this video is to document the way I went about things. Have a look at the things that I did wrong, the mistakes I made, how I fixed them, if I could fix them, if it wasn't too late. Uh, so that, number one, with my lousy old age memory, I could go back and just check out to see what I did and what I didn't do. I'm trying to take this as far back in the process as I can. I very much doubt whether I will ever get to the point where I'm cloning the mushrooms or creating my own spawn from scratch uh, from an existing batch of mushrooms because I don't have the clean room environment, I don't have a laminar flow hood and all these other things that you need nor do I think I really want them. Um, mushrooms are nice and it's great fun growing them. But do I want to spend hundreds of dollars setting up to grow things right from the very beginning? Probably not. We'll see how that goes anyway. But I will be trying a few other things. I'm going to try liquid culture. Uh, and this will inject into our own grain, uh, which will be uninoculated, if that's a real word. I'll be trying to reproduce the liquid spawn by growing it in a liquid medium, which is just honey and water but I've got to be able to sterilize that. And that's another thing that's going to happen. My pressure cooker should be here fairly soon. It's a real cheapie. I hope it doesn't blow up on me. But when it arrives, I'm going to be able to sterilize that master's mix. I'll also be able to sterilize the honey water growth medium that we'll use for the liquid spawn and increasing the amount of liquid spawn that we get. So we'll see how that goes. Other things I'm going to try is I'm going to build a monotub. And a monotub, which I will put a link to somewhere, um, there's a couple of really good videos on building these, is a method we use for growing rather than in buckets, but on a nice flat surface so that our portobello or button mushrooms, those sort of things, can uh, uh, grow the way they're meant to grow. So I'm going to knock up one of those, and we'll see how that goes. I've got portobello spawn coming fairly soon, I hope, from a different place, um, which I'll also link to. Uh, and keep moving backwards in the starting point. Try and get it as early as we can get it to grow mushrooms and see if I can become a little bit more self-sufficient in the growing itself, which is really what I'm aiming to do. I just want to be able to grow mushrooms and not buy them, because when you buy them in the shop, you don't know what they're being grown in, you don't know what chemicals you used, you don't know anything about them. And even in the shop, you don't know who's been handling them. So I always peel mushrooms that I buy from the store because I don't like the idea of grubby people putting their fingers in my food without me actually being able to wash it or clean it. And I don't like washing mushrooms, so I peel them. And that takes away some of the flavour and texture. You also can't buy much else except those button mushrooms and uh, portobellos in the supermarkets. And these oyster mushrooms that we grew taste very, very different to standard mushrooms. Really nice, as you'll see at the end, but they are different. And having the ability to grow different things from scratch, or as close to scratch as we can get, is really what I'm about in my gardening journey. God, I hate that marketing term. It's not what I want to do. I just want to try and do things from the base, most basic level as I can do. Anyway, so I've got a few things I'm going to try. Liquid spawn, monotub going into our, uh, or inoculating our own grain, breeding up the um, liquid spawn using that growth medium. Importantly, having my pressure cooker so I can sterilize my master's mix and grow a few different types of mushrooms that need that master's mix, that's going to be really interesting. But we'll do that in the buckets too. So that's going to be an interesting experiment. I think I'll bugger it up a few... Oh, I can't say that. Yeah, what the hell. I think I'll bugger it up a few times, but that's what it's all about, learning. So, before we actually get into it, what did I learn? Well, it's a hell of a lot easier than I thought it would be. It really isn't that difficult. If you buy the 
uh, grade spawn in, make your own buckets. It's pretty easy. Uh, the results really good, as I say. I use too much spawn, but the value turns out to be pretty good anyway. I should get about three kilos from thirty dollars worth grain spawn, but it should be fifteen dollars worth. So I reckon five dollars a kilo, not bad for gourmet mushrooms. I think we all should be doing this. If you're really into growing stuff yourself, growing mushrooms is easy. It's not that time consuming. It's mostly just waiting. It is a bit messy. There's no heavy duty chemicals or anything you have to use in pasteurization. So if you stick to the pasteurization, it, it's simple, bit of lime, bit of water, just let it sit for a day, easy. Um, and once you've got the buckets, it's cheap. So I think we really should be doing this if you're into growing your own food and knowing what you're eating. And we're gonna to have to try that master's mix, higher nutrient substrate, which means more susceptible to contamination and infection. Uh, so I'll have to be much better at cleaning it, which by the way, I have something coming from Temu, which will be interesting for mushroom growing. You'll see that soon, I hope. Anyway, let's get on with it. We're gonna go through step by step as things happened. Again, I apologize for the quality of the editing and putting this video together. It's not great, but the audio is okay in the most instances. Um, and the video is okay. It just doesn't have that continuity. All right, let's get into it. Oh, can I say that, Mark? I nicked your saying. All right, let's go. So first steps in preparing our mushrooms is the buckets. I've got some handy pails with lids, food safe, superior strength from Bunnings. I'll put a price for these up there. Not expensive, not cheap, but not expensive. And we're going to knock some 12, 12 millimeter holes in them. So we'll do either side. Actually, we'll do it here. And under the handle. So what I'm doing is just to the side of the handle, just to the side of the lip there, one directly below. Make sure I'm actually going through the bucket, not the... Actually, I might move that one up a bit. And then we're going to put one roughly halfway. Halfway there, halfway there, that looks about halfway, and that looks like about halfway. Okay, so one, two, and then one in the middle. From what I've seen online, this is what we need to be doing. I have my very long 12 millimeter drill, and let's see how it goes through. It's easy. Uh, put him on the right spot. Now we need to clear off all the gummy bits in there. It shouldn't be terribly difficult, hopefully. Don't want any sharp edges on there to break the mushrooms off early. So I'll use this knife just to chamfer it a little bit. Do the same on the inside. For our next trick, a few small holes in the bottom. Uh, 
Uh, just a few small holes for drainage. I've got to clean those holes up a bit more. But that one is ready to go. What I've got here is a little grinder thing. See how that goes. Yeah, sort of works. All right. Good for now. Hi, everyone. I just got home from work and I think my mushrooms have arrived, which means it'll be just like being at work. I'll be a mushroom. Kept in the dark and fed nothing but, well, we won't go there. So let's have a look what's in here. Don't want to slice the bags open if that's. This is heavy. Oh. Okay, this is only the first of two bags. What we've got here uh, is my wooden pallets. By the look of it, let me just check. Yes, it's my master's mix. So this is what we're going to be growing the mushrooms in. We'll open that later. Mushrooms still haven't arrived, hopefully soon. And it looks like they come with instructions. So if you come over here, so we've got instructions on here on how to prepare it. And what's in there so I'm going to pop this outside out the way 20 kilos of it and we'll do some in this master's mulch and we'll do some in some sugarcane mulch that I bought all right let's get outside if you can hear funny noises in the background it's Rufus chewing his toys anyway we got our second package from Little Laker Farms uh, this is the interesting one uh, as soon as it arrived, we popped it in the fridge as they recommend. And let's open him up. I'll open it this way so I see first. Ooh. This is our grain spawn. And what we have is mycelium in this grain, which we're going to put into our straw. We've got warm white oyster, which is quite nice, but this is the one I really want to try. Silver, silver shimeji. Store between two and five degrees, there's one kilo of each here. Could have bought more, but this is a trial. We're trying it out first. Uh, I'll put the prices up there as usual, and a link in the description below to Little Acre for Australian people who want to give this a shot. They have a huge range of varieties, mostly oysters, but a few others. All right, so we're going to pop this back in the fridge. And they can just go in as packets, we won't keep the box. And we're going to go outside and get our pasteurizing of straw and wood chips to grow these mushrooms. The oysters, we'll do two, two lots of oyster because they're the easy one to grow and they will be done in sugarcane straw. And these need to be done in wood chip or wood pellets, I believe. So we'll go out and uh, get that started off. It's got to soak for 24 hours. One will go in a cold lime bath. That's the sugarcane mulch. And the wood chip will go in a hot uh, pasteurizing process. Okay, next steps. Let's go. Okay, we've taken some of our clean sugarcane mulch Nice, clean, dry, relatively small pieces. Some of these plastic hessian bags have been used. We've put sufficient straw in there. Okay, so now we're going to pasteurize by filling up this, these buckets with very hot cap water. Well, not filling them up, just getting them full enough so that we can fully submerge the straw. And we'll just a little bit of boiled water just to bring the temperature up a little bit more. And we get our messy straw. And we put it in the bucket. 
we don't want to burn our hand, but we are going to have to fill that up a bit more. And we're going to have to clean that up before the wife gets home and kills me. Okay, so they've been sitting in here for an hour. The water temperature is warm, but not hot. We'll take our bricks out and we need to drain it. Right, let's just lift that out. Pop it back in there to drain. Let's do this one. Pop it back in there. Take these bricks out and empty the bathtub. Our next step is we need to really sterilize these wells. So I'm going to spray the inside, and I've already been spraying this one a little bit, with isopropyl alcohol. That one's expensive. I'll show you the large one I bought, which was much, much cheaper than this. But I'll spray the outside, spray it all around the rim. We have to do the lid as well, of course. And Rufus has come for a bit of alcohol. Even do the outside of the lid. And my hands. So that should be sterile. Alright, so the first one we're going to do is our warm white. And we want to get 10% by volume uh, warm white spore to straw, which means we need to have basically a litre. So I guess, and I've got my litre jug, we'll measure it, that about half back. So we'll get two tubs out of this. And this was $30. But you can get two kilos for $40. Much more economical way of doing it. The reason I got the small bag is I didn't know if this is going to work, so I just got little ones to try out. Now we sterilise the outside, because we're going to open it up. And I think I need a knife. Imagine camera person, could you get me a sharp knife? All right, so now we need to get a layer of straw in because we're going to layer straw some of the spawn. And this is still wet. Let's just pop that there, but not dripping. So we squeeze it, no water comes out. So here we go. Put a couple of big handfuls in there. Should do us. Now we're going to open this up. We've sterilised the outside of the packet. That went through a bit easier than I thought. We need about a litre of spawn in there, which is going to be yeah, very much half the half the packet. So we'll use half the packet and we get some and we crumble it in. Okay, let's pop this down here, push it down, a little bit more, okay, and we get our lid, we pop it on. Oh, 
push that down a bit harder. I might get something to tap it with. We use the surgical tape because it's breathable and we cover the holes up. So we're going to cover every one of the holes up. For two weeks. Okay, so we've sealed all the holes. It's now full. This is now ready to sit at the roof for about two weeks. Let the mycelium take over. Then we'll take the tape off and hopefully we'll get mushroom sprouting. So I've got another two here to do. So I'll do the next oyster mushroom and we might have a quick look at the, the different spore for the... If I can find it. Silver Sejimi, is it? Shimeji. Shimeji. Two done. The reason there's not three is I didn't mix up enough uh, straw to pasteurize. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the third one in the master's mix, and I'll put a link up on the top of the screen for what that is. But it's basically wood chip and some form of husk, sorghum husk or something. Um, and we'll see if that works for those particular mushrooms. But it sits like this for two, maybe three weeks in this weather. Then we'll peel the surgical tape off the holes and hopefully we'll get some decent mushrooms. More mushrooming. What we're going to do here is we've got about 10 litres of water, sufficient straw to do a one bucket and about 30 to 40 grams of lime which we're going to pop into there. Now of course this is hydrated lime. We'll have a look at the bag it came in it's huge but it was only $14 I think for a huge bag the last me right there's our pH strip I reckon it's sitting around about 12 which is good might even be 13 I don't know 13 maybe 12 and a half 13 that's all good okay it's all weighed down ready to go and we're just going to cover it up with a an old towel keep any dirt out and it's going to sit there for a day onward well i've been sterilizing away for our second lot of mushrooms which is going to be our silver shimeji and this is done in the alkaline solution so i probably should be wearing gloves but i don't have any so i'll start off by getting some of the alkaline soaked straw which is reasonably dry now a couple of handfuls in there and again we're going to use about just under half of the spore that we have so everything's sterile here I'll cut him open I know I'm overusing this but for my first batch I think it's a good idea to add quite a bit extra in oh try and break that up a bit as I said, everything is sterile, including my hands. The psyllium has definitely come out of here. And we'll put that in there. Might use a little bit less this time. Back on our sterile surface. All right, that's all packed down. We shall get the lid on. Tape the holes up. And that should be right. That's our third bucket. All right, at least two weeks like that and we shall see how it turns out. G'day everyone. We're gonna have fun with the fungi. Um, 
time to harvest. And I'll let you in on a little secret. This is not our first harvest. Um, we did take 260 grams off it the other day, but we cut the mushrooms off, uh, thinking that the ones that weren't fully grown would grow, but unfortunately it didn't. So what we should be doing is twisting them off. So I'll turn this round to one that we cut. And if you zoom in here, you can see we cut it off, but the others really didn't grow much more anyway. So we're going to do what they actually said in the videos I've watched. We're going to get it like that, and we're going to give it a bit of a twist and take it off. So these are our two buckets of, um, which one are they? Off-white? No, warm white oyster mushrooms. Uh, I got 260 grams off this bucket before, but I just sort of cut, broke off the ones that we thought were big enough, hoping the others would go full size. That was a mistake. We're going to do the right way this time and twist the whole thing off. And if we lose a few small ones, we lose a few small ones. But this is looking good. This is the first blooming. Hopefully we'll get three out of it, each one getting a little bit smaller, but... Uh, we shall see how we go, but I'm very pleased with the way it's going. I'm going to pull all these off. So here we go. We'll take this one off. I'm going to bring it around to me, give it a twist. And there we go. So as we can see, it's come off from the bucket like that. They're nice and soft and smell very mushroomy. Oh, I keep twisting this around. We'll take this big one off here. This is going to be a challenge. Parts of it have come off. Oh. Well, how does that look? That's not bad, is it? There's another nice big one there. That's how we do it put our hand over top and bottom, and the whole thing comes off like so. Keeping going around, take that one off. Still got one that seems to be growing, but I'm not sure if it is. Right there, we shall let it go. These are quite small, but we'll take them anyway. Now, here's one that we use a knife to cut a few off. And as we can see, the smaller ones on here haven't haven't actually grown anymore. So we don't cut them off anymore. We twist and remove the whole thing. And I think this is our last one, is it? Okay, so we have 1.2 kilos from our first 1.168 to be precise. If we add in the other, how much should we get, I'd say? 260 grams, was it? Yeah. So we add another 260 grams to that, we end up with 1.3, 1.42 kilos out of these two buckets on the first blooming. Uh, if we get roughly the same out of the next two, a three kilo haul from um, these buckets is actually not bad considering I really overdid the, the grain spawn in there. I should have used about half the amount that I did. So we'll do that in future. Now, one more thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna open the bucket to see if they're blooming on top because we didn't pack these full, as I later found out. We should pack them right up to the top of the lid or we'll get mushrooms growing in the top. So let's open one of these and see if we've got mushrooms growing in the top as well. And that's a problem because they sit in there and they can rot. Okay, we're ready. You're going to have to come in and zoom over the top as we open it. But no, it hasn't. A beautiful mycelium still growing in there. So we'll close that up before it gets contaminated. Oh, these buckets seal well. And let's get them back out into the greenhouse. Hopefully grow some more might be able to hear the dog chewing on his bone in the background. Noisy fella. Anyway, enjoy life, enjoy the mushrooms.
or catch in the garden.